Hello primates, welcome to the zoo. This is my entry into the fourth event of the Ponage Olympics in the Science Division. The video in question is Eddie O'Connor, the European Supergrid. Even though it will greatly affect all of your lives, I doubt that any of you have seen this, so please take the time to go see what is proposed in order to comprehend the value of this video. Though a font of good information went into the making of the video and the science ideas of the European Supergrid, when that good information was put through a corporate filter, the bullshit that came out is a pure reflection of profit motives and has somewhere between little and nothing to do with the solutions that would be good for humanity and the health of the planet overall. This corporate boondoggle is still being pursued as if it could be a reality and is, as it is planned is a Jurassic Park scenario and must be stopped. The reason why I say this is that it is based on the same kind of polit political corporate theocracy that is filling the Gulf of Mexico with crude oil right now. The corporate high priests are insisting oh, that we all must have faith and to trust them because nothing could ever go wrong with this plan. Too much effort has been spent on answering the question, can we, and not enough attention has been put on the question, should we? Should there be an ocean and land-based supergrid harvesting the vast wind, wave, and tide energies that are going to waste? Absolutely. Should high voltage direct current be the means of its collection and energy node distribution be the source of our green energy? Absolutely not. If something, anything, opens the insulation on a high voltage DC cable, everything in the ocean for miles would be electrocuted. Same on land, everything from fungi to CEOs, debt. Okay, so it wouldn't be a complete loss. If this were a world where debt-based economy and corporate bottom line ideals did not require the society produce and eat itself to population collapse and perhaps extinction in order to, for the few, very few benefactors of the corporate meme to become obscenely powerful, then yes, maybe it might be worth the gamble and pursuing. The fact of the matter is that it's not. The religion of a global based debt of a global debt based economy is falling apart, and all but the obscenely wealthy and the insanely ignorant say good riddance. What is this going to mean if this project is well underway and suddenly there is no corporate or government structures as we have known them who are able to plow the billions of dollars into cutting edge technology and into getting this effort of this idiocy patched together? The fact of the matter is that there are two resources that are essential to the continuity of human civilization, readily available resource of energy and a readily available resource of fresh water. When the debt-based money system falls apart, and it will, whoever and whatever is left holding the power and water cards will become your lord and master. Who's to say that it will not be some Napoleonic twit who will say, Damn the consequences! Full speed ahead! It is your duty to your children and your grandchildren to prevent this from happening. The centralization of power by means of centralizing economic wealth has created a situation where anything like the resemblance of the will of the people being heard has just become a memory. You could change that. The point of this video is that yes, wind, wave, tidal, geothermal, infrared, solar, photovoltaic, solar, gra and gravity hydro have to be the sources of energy that civilization depend on in the very near future and not some far off la la land. But if we, but even if we pretend for a moment that the debt based economy is not going to collapse, that the soil is not nutrient depleted, that oceans are not quickly being emptied of all non microscopic forms of light to be put on the dinner table, that fish, fossilized sunshine, and fossil fresh water are not what people are made of and that there will be no horrific population crash, uh, crash as a result of our insane economic religion imploding, then high voltage DC transmission and energy generation still does not and cannot solve the energy storage problem. The concept is dependent upon there always being wind somewhere and that for those rare times, even if it's just for a few minutes, there will be enough power coming in to supply peak demand situations and that's just horseshit. Nobody can buy that, even on paper. The proposed high-voltage DC transmission supergrid system is intentionally designed to require that carbon-based power plants are going to continue to exist due to necessities of peak power demand requirements and to continue to produce carbon dioxide and atmospheric waste heat, supposedly into infinity. And this is completely unacceptable. Carbon-based power plants should have and could have been eliminated 10 years ago. 
but due to the same corporate structure that will be screwing us over with a high voltage DC supergrid, common sense measures were ignored in favor of short term profit. You, YouTube viewer, should have been asking yourself uh, during this rant of mine, well if he's so smart, why well, that's not a better answer? Well, I'm not that smart, but I do have a better answer. The super grid across the world needs to be pneumatic. That means pressurized atmospheric air. There are many excellent reasons for this to be the global focus, most of which there's no time in this one video to explain. For one, it solves the issue of energy storage cut and dried. End of subject. Done. Underwater caissons are like an inverted bowl in your bathtub. The deeper it goes, the more air pressure it can hold. When you expand this simple hydropneumatic principle to a very large scale and stage undersea caissons and on land deep underground caissons pressurized by a lake above, you have an extremely simple, permanently maintenance free and ecologically sane battery system that does not require the endless tyranny of a patriarchal government or a fascist corporation. If an air pipe is broken or a caisson is cracked, it'd be like, oh, somebody farted in the bathtub. Let's say an inland or deep underground caisson cracked due to an earthquake. What would be the result? The environmental result would be uh, temporarily losing some of the ease of access to the water supply in the freshwater lake. And if a human were standing or swimming directly over the reservoir drain, they might be killed. And that community would lose one of the many caissons that it should have to store the energy that it makes. But unless sewage or something toxic spilled into the fresh water, the overall tragedy of the event would be minimal. If you, homeowner, farmer, apartment building, landlord, or even the bum on the street want to contribute to the energy available in a pneumatic supergrid and earn valuable energy credits, you could easily do so if the grid was there, if it existed. Rooftop windmills, infrared solar Stirling engine driven air compressors, and other local means of collections could be metered and centralized to per community, per community or block, to then be fed into the greater grid to contribute to the overall metered super grid, which in turn powers all the municipal systems supplying fresh waters to homes, farms, and industries. These can be segregated at any time. The readily available kinetic energy could be used directly by the consumer and provider to provide, provide every kind of stationary device that currently uses AC electricity for its uh, kinetic purposes. It would then become practical for vehicles that only travel locally to be compressed air and electric hybrid powered. Uh, but before you think that I am suggesting that a pneumatic supergrid would replace an electric one, no, that's a mistake. It could and hopefully will replace the means by which the current electrical grid is powered. And it could remove the centralized, monopolized factor of energy, giving it as a res renewable resource commodity of a positive base economy with the personal power and responsibility back to the control of the ordinary citizen. The system of centrally created, controlled, and distributed commodity of energy cannot be allowed to be completely dominated by a few dozen people on the entire planet. Get it? Nor should it continue to be a major source of temptation for a terrorist to blow up, leaving large urban portions of the planet helpless, stranded, and starving. For anyone who still doesn't get the importance of creating a pneumatic super grid based on localized consumer provided low tech completely green energy that not only can and would be able to contribute and benefit to and from the economy, but if for some reason, say, a terrorist blows up an EMP and perhaps an entire continent's worth of traditional power grid goes down, a pneumatic power grid would not be affected. Let me say that again. The pneumatic supergrid is far less susceptible to the potentials of catastrophic societal damage that are highly probable with any kind of centralized electrical-only power grid. As I suggested before, energy and water will be the resources that all economies are based on in the coming times. The pneumatic supergrid could ensure that you and your progeny will be part of the, co of the economy in the role of a contributor and a benefactor and not a mere slave of it. Enjoy your life. The only thing not borrowed from those yet to be.